So I was going so far. You enjoying the speakers? I think they're amazing. Um, all right. Do you know guys the one from the Italian, the German, and the English that walk in a bar? No, I'm joking. I'm just not going to talk. We have Salman from Apvia. Please give it up from Salman. Give me one second. Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Good morning, Amsterdam. How are we all doing? Yay. Yay! This is the last session before lunch, so we'll try and keep it light. Right, imagine you have a website, could be any website, and there's some traffic coming to it, and it's working fine. But at some point, you launch a new product, I don't know, iPhone or whatever, and there's a lot of people coming to your website now, and there's not enough traffic being served and people are not happy. What should happen is that we should use what Kubernetes has been promising us, right? The autoscaler, you can autoscale it. But it doesn't do everything by default. There's some work that we have to do in order to do that. And that's what we're going to look at today. How do we autoscale based on some events and uh, basically scale up the website and let people do what they need to do? But before we start, because you've all come here, I thought we should reward you with something. Everybody knows this Tux, right? The Linux Tux. It's a Lego. I have this Lego right here. We like Lego. Who likes Lego? Yes. Yeah, but everybody's not going to get it like that. You know, uh, there'll be a bit of a quiz. Just one question. Shout out the number. People know about the landscape, CNCF landscape, the CNCF landscape. It's no, not that one. <laughs> this one, right? So this, this landscape. This shows, you know, we were talking about, Sarah was talking about it this morning about choices and how many choices we have. There's a lot of projects on there or cards. So here's a simple question. The question is, how many cards are on the CNCF landscape? Some of you might already know this, but I'm not unreasonable, so I'm going to give you a bit of a hint. This is what 20 cards look like, right? So that's 20 cards for service mesh, right? So here you go. Shout a number. Whoever's closest, my, uh, William here will give you this. So just shout a number. 400, 400, higher. 600, keep going up, keep going up. Was that 1,000? Keep going. 1,200? I think, we, yeah, let's, let's, let's stop here. One, one, seven, four. That's very good. A round of applause to that gentleman there. Can you just pass it on? One, one, seven, four. Enjoy the Lego. I don't know how long it takes to make it, but apparently the instructions are as good as what we see. So just a few more things. So that's one, one, seven, four projects on there. I, I, I just put out some more stats on here. It's, from, it's as of last night. 3.6 3 million stars, but more importantly, like countless of community stars, right? People who are working on these projects in their own time. So great, and some, some of the other stuff there. So this was as of last night, uh, 1,174. But when I woke up this morning, it's, uh, it looks a bit like this. It keeps increasing every day, right? So but I know you're a bit disappointed that you didn't, you didn't win uh, maybe that Lego, but don't worry. Uh, I work for Appgear, and we have a booth downstairs if you'd like to win some of this stuff. We have some cool stuff, so just come through. We are downstairs, uh, the Mark, Lucy, and uh, um, Rory are down there, and I'm going to be myself there, so if you want to come and have a chat. Uh, I work for a company called Appia as an MLOps engineer, and we are a startup. We are a consultancy. We also have a product that helps you deploy stuff to cloud easier. And also work as a Kubernetes instructor for LearnCades. Check out uh, our website, learncades.io. And we have, some, we have a bunch of blogs. You can find me on Twitter at, at SolManikbar. I also have a bit of a YouTube channel. You can check that out, SolManikbar. So that's Appia, appia.io. Check us out. Uh, I had to make sure I put that there because I need to get paid. So we're done with that. But yeah, so that's my YouTube channel. Just check out my YouTube channel. But before I start, really want to thank the hosts and the organizers. You know, they've done an awesome job putting an event together. Would you agree with that? Yeah? Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. So, uh, and also I want to uh, thank my friend Daniele Polenches from LearnCage who helped me put together this, uh, this presentation. So thanks, Daniele. So here's what we're going to do. Brief look at services and a quick look at ingresses. I'm sure you're already aware of what those are, but just to make sure we're all uh, uh, on the same page. And then we'll look at CADA. How do we autoscale it? And then I'm going to show you how to autoscale the ingress. Whatever I show you, even though we're going to scaling the ingress, you can also apply to any other workloads that you have. So. It, it should work fine. So imagine 
Uh, just, a, just a bit of a quick recap. This is, imagine you deploy a website, and uh, it's just a static page. And if you want to deploy this in Kubernetes, usually you deploy the website and you have to stick in a load balancer because you need to make sure the traffic is distributed evenly. And you can have multiple load balancers because you might be running multiple applications inside. And then if you're running multiple applications, you want to make sure you route the request based on uh, the request that they've sent to. So uh, in Kubernetes, as we all know, uh, the internal load balancers are services. Uh, they pick the right pod to send. And then the, 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 the top layer load balancer is called an ingress. So this is sending requests from outside the cluster to inside the cluster. And then we have pods. I'm, I'm sure we all, we all know this. So this is, so this is what it is. We're going to focus on, on ingress today. Uh, but before I can talk about ingress, it's important to just point out really quickly uh, what services are and what are the limitations of services in, in the context of running websites and why do we need ingress. So every time you deploy an application inside a pod, a container or multiple containers, it gets an IP address. And then we use service as an abstraction layer. Because it's convenient to, uh, to have an abstraction layer, if you send a request uh, from another pod or from outside somewhere, the service knows how many pods live underneath it, and it can basically you request you send a request to the service, and it's it's an abstraction, so that makes a request, and only the service knows how many pods are running. So you could have two, uh, and if if a pod dies or comes back up, it doesn't matter. Uh, it will keep track of it and it'll pick it. And all, if it goes up to ten pods up or down, doesn't matter. Uh, the pod that is sending a request doesn't need to know anything. It's the service that needs to know it. So that's very high level service uh, uh, definition. Uh, if you would ask chat GPT, that's, I guess that's what it would give you. Um, but there's different kinds of services. We have a headless service. That's a building block and the most basic service. It's basically like all it is just an endpoint, the IP address. Uh, it's not very good with load balancing. So what, we, what Kubernetes also provides is, a, is the default service. So if you create a service in Kubernetes, cluster IP extends headlets, kind of like a load balancer. So it does a better job than uh, headless for load balancing. Then we have, so the two services so far, they're all internal services. You can't expose it to the outside cluster, outside of the cluster. So then we have this thing called node port, this external service. It basically opens a port on each node. But you might have multiple nodes running. So what Kubernetes provides is another kind of service called the load balancer service. And it, it just has a node port. and if you're in a cloud provider, it provisions an actual a load balancer and attaches it to the nodes. Um, if you're doing this on-premises and you've used the service type load balancer, you have to have some kind of a project like uh, Metal LB that allows you to do that. But it's kind of, kind of useful if you're doing it with a cloud provider. But there's a couple of things. Uh, there, there's a few gotchas with uh, services. It, a good thing is that it automatically provisions the, the load balancer. So we're talking about external services, because we want to make sure we can access the website from outside of the cluster. It's automatic provisioning. It provisions the nodes on the ports and attaches it to the load balancer. But as I said, it's cloud provider specific. Uh, and uh, if you're doing on-premises yet, there's extra work you need to do. And I don't know if you have done this, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're aware. Cloud providers are not cheap in the cloud, uh, in, uh, sorry, load balancers are not cheap in the cloud provider. Imagine if everybody is spinning up a load balancer for the application. Could, be, could cost a lot of money. And the limitation is it's basically just layer four. Uh, if you wish to expose services that use TCP or UDP, services are good. Uh, your application is good. So this is where we need something like this, an ingress. Uh, something that can understand HTTP requests and can deal with it and send the request to a service. And that's why we have the service. Uh, we have this ingress that sits on top of service. I'm sure you all know. But that is what it is. What we can do with an ingress is we can route traffic based on the requests that we make. For example, in this, I have this cluster with multiple applications, the red, the green, and the yellow. And um, you can do path-based routing. So if somebody says example.com forward slash account, send them to uh, the, the, red, uh, the red pods. If somebody says forward slash uh, checkout, send them to the yellow pod. And so this is where ingress comes in quite handy. Or, or also you can do subdomains. Like if you need to do domain-based routing, you can do all of this. So that's what an ingress is, right? So that's the ingress, the point of an ingress. Everybody happy so far? Are we, are we all good? OK, cool. So, so far, I've shown you ingress as just a, a black bar. That's all it is. Uh, and I'm sure you already know this. It turns out that 
an ingress is just a deployment, a regular deployment of, uh, depending on the type of ingress controller you pick, there's di different ingress controllers, and a service, usually load balancer or node port, because you know it's like external service, so you can expose it. And in this diagram, you can see that the black bar has been disappeared, has disappeared, and now we have this service, load balancer type, and we have an ingress pod. In this case, we have Nginx. You can pick any uh, that you like. There's, there's many. And, and there's quite a few which, which ingress controller you should pick, depending on what your requirements are. Uh, there is some, uh, there's some research out there that you can check out you know, on uh, uh, learncase.io. So it's basically a regular deployment. An ingress comes in two parts. You have this thing called the ingress controller, basically the pod that's running, that understands what to do with the rules that you write. And the rules are those ingress manifests that you write. These YAML files, right? So these YAML, people written this ingress YAML file before, right? Yeah, have people written it? One person has in this room. I'm sure there's more than one. Uh, good, good, excellent. People written this, right? Um, so this is, this, an ingress is writing the rules of uh, defining what should happen to the request. Where should it go to? Which service should the request go to? So we write this YAML file and we submit that to the Kubernetes cluster. The cluster takes that request and it stores the information inside a NetCD database. And we have a couple of components in here. We have a scheduler, we have a controller manager. But that information goes in and goes, in, goes ahead and gets stored in the etcd database. That's where we store the state, the desired state, and the current state. And the controllers do their magic and make sure the, the state, the desired state, uh, the current state always goes closer to the desired state. So that's what it does. But when you deploy this rule, the ingress YAML file, uh, the cluster itself will, the, the, pod, the ingress pod, the controller, will spin up. It will get the information from the ingress, because it, etcd, and it will configure the rules. So nginx config, if you use nginx, it will configure the rules in nginx config to say, if this is the, the, the pod, you need to send the request to this service. That's all it does, right? And then it will just write, or if you write another, uh, another ingress, it will take that rule, it will update its config, and it will understand this. So here's the thing. If you're running a website, so that's ingress and service, and that's our backstory. But if you run a website, now we understand the request has to come from outside of the cluster. So it has to go via the ingress pod. In this case, it's Nginx. If it goes via the Nginx pod, and if a lot of traffic comes in, you might end up with a bottleneck if you have just one replica running. You might say, hey, uh, what should happen is that if, if a ton of traffic comes in, we should scale out. You might say, oh, maybe I can just start with uh, 10 ingress pods running at all times which is fine, you can do that, uh, but of course it's gonna cost you money. So if you wanna save some money in these times, especially in the UK, because the pound is very down, uh, we need to make sure that uh, we can scale down when we need to. So what you can do, as I said, in Ingress, the deployment is a normal deployment. You can configure this if you deploy it in your cluster as a Helm chart or whatever it is. You can configure these settings, you can change these settings. You can say, there's, there's a file in here, there's a line in here called replicas, I can open the file, change it to three replicas, and submit it to the cluster, and I'll have three replicas. But it's not very scalable, it's not very, um, you know, you have to, maybe you have to wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning. Well, we, need, we need something good, right? We, we don't want to wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning. We, we want it to happen automatically. So this is enter our helper, the horizontal pod autoscaler. It's a resource in Kubernetes that scales out the pods. The vertical pod autoscaler is different, it changes the CPU and memory, so it can increase more CPU and memory for it. Horizontal pod autoscaler spins up more pods. So you can see this, in this case, what should happen is imagine there's a deployment for the ingress we've deployed. We deployed this ingress controller in our cluster, and it's running with three replicas. What horizontal pod autoscaler can do is it can query some metric, let's say number of active connections inside each pod, right? That sounds like a reasonable a uh, reasonable metric. Let's say you can query that metric, and we can write a rule. We can say, hey, if each pod is, has got more than 100 connections, we need to scale up. A reasonable request, let's say. Then what should, what horizontal pod autoscaler do, does is it will do its calculation, and if you uh, breach the threshold, it will automatically adjust the deployment. And it can, it can scale up, add another pod, and scale back down, and remove all the pods that we that we don't need. So what we want to do is scale based on incoming traffic. With me so far, everybody good? 
I know it's 15 minutes to lunch, so uh, we, we, we're, we're on track, don't worry, we're on track. So what we want to do is ba we basically want to scale on HTTP requests coming in, basically requests coming in. But you can do it on any metric you prefer. In our case, we will just do it on, let's say, active connections. So we, first of all, we need to have metrics available, and we need to expose it so the horizontal pod autoscaler can take those metrics and do something with it. So usually you would write in, in your application, you do forward slash metrics, and you can write key value pairs in there, and just uh, in your application ma make it available so something like Prometheus can, can scrape it. But we, t we take that metrics, we need to store those metrics, because you know, the requests have to come over time, we need to store it, just run our calculation, and then once we store it, so collect and store it, and then we're gonna do auto-scaling. We have to base on those metrics, we'll write some rules, and we'll auto-scale. And this is what you see in the demo as well. So uh, what we have is, luckily for me, uh, makes the demo easier, Nginx provides already some metrics, so I don't have to write anything from scratch. Nginx pod has forward slash metrics, it provides these metrics. In here, we can take this metric, Nginx connections active. So this is all the uh, connections coming in. That's what we're going to take. They're available, but we need to scrape the metrics. Uh, so what we can do is we can use Prometheus. People like Prometheus here? Anybody like Prometheus? Yeah, we got. It's a great project, right? So we basically what, what it does is it helps us. You have something called a metrics server in Kubernetes uh, that uh, that can. That can, be, that can be used to pull out the metrics from whatever resource that we want to pull out from. You takes it off from Kubelet and provides it to other resources like horizontal pod autoscaler. And this is where we can use uh, Prometheus. Prometheus allows us to do that. In Prometheus, we can scrape the metric and then store it wherever we like. In this case, we're going to store it in something else. But what we're going to use is Prometheus. You don't have to use Prometheus. Uh, but in this, in this one, we're going to use Prometheus. And I have a cluster that's running locally, which has Prometheus already installed. And then we're going to use this project called KEDA, uh, or KEDA, Kubernetes Event Driven Autoscaling. Have people heard of or used this project? Oh, yeah, excellent. We have quite a few people. So if, if it gets stuck, you can come up and you know, give me a hand if the demo doesn't work. But it should be good. So here's the thing. We need to expose the metrics. Uh, we need to store them. So uh, we can scrape it using Prometheus. We need to store the metrics. And then we basically need some kind of an adapter that can take the information and feed it to the resource metrics so we can, uh, we can act upon that. And then we need something that scales based on requests coming in, uh, to, uh, coming in from, from wherever they're coming in. And this is where we can use this uh, KEDA, Kubernetes Event Driven Autoscaling. I'll show you in a second a uh, couple of uh, diagrams for what, what it looks like. It lets you basically drive the autoscaling of Kubernetes based on events, events that happen inside the cluster or events that happen outside the cluster too, which is amazing. If you have a bunch of requests outstanding in a Kafka queue, you can scale on that. Um, so there's a bunch of scalers that KEDA already provides that we can plug into. Even stuff like SQL queries. Run an SQL query, if the result is above some uh, number, do something with it. So that's where we're going to use KEDA. What we can do is qu it's quite flexible, it's open source, and it drives the horizontal pod autoscaler. Something needs to feed all this information to the horizontal pod autoscaler to be able to scale it. Um, and that's what we're going to use KEDA. What is it? So we have the metric server, as I talked about before, just briefly. It's used to collect metrics from Kubelet. So the Kubelet that's running on each node, it collects metrics from there and exposes it to the Kubernetes API. And it plugs into the aggregator API. But uh, what we have is this metric server. It's not enabled by default, so you have to enable it. But when you install with uh, in KDA on the cluster, it will be enabled. And then we need an adapter, which you know Prometheus adapter. Same uh, um, KDA also provides one. It can collect and serve custom metrics to and, and external metrics for, to the horizontal pod autoscaler. KDA has it, and a controller that sits in the cluster and acts upon the events. So that's, that's what we need. So if the controller is there, we're going to have a bunch of custom resource definitions, so things that, we d things that KEDA defines. And I'll show you an example of that. And um, controller is something that extends Kubernetes and does a functionality. And then we have what are called scalers. We, we're not going to talk about them today, but this is, I briefly mentioned it. 
Um, you know, if, if you, for example, you can based on you can define some rules based on requests coming in from RabbitMQ. You can scale out your application. Or there's a lot of uh, CloudWatch events like AWS CloudWatch, anything in PubSub in, in the cloud provider. It's very neat and it's quite easy to set up. And so this is where CADA is. CADA comes in handy, and that's what we're going to do a demo on. So we have 10 minutes. Uh, so a lot can go wrong in 10 minutes, but. So that is the demo. Uh, we're going to do live. If it fails, I have a video as well. But we'll pretend it was live if it, does, if it fails. But I'm sure it'll work. So you can, if you want to check out, Daniel wrote the blog for this bit.ly forward slash KCD scaling. Uh, it runs on Minikube. You can run it yourself, or you can run it in any cl uh, cluster you like. Um, so that's, that's, where, that's where explanation and, and the code and everything is there. So definitely check that out. So what, what I got, which I'll show you in a, in a minute, is a Minikube cluster, is running. I've installed Ingress, in, Nginx Ingress on it already because I do not trust the internet during demos, so it's already running. And I've also installed Prometheus and Kada. Uh, I've used Helm for it, but you can install however you like. Uh, it's just one command line, spins up the pods, I'll show you the pods in a second. And then what we need to do is we need to have a way of generating some load, right? Because otherwise you'll think I'm making it up. So we're going to use uh, a Locust. It's an open source project to just generate some load. And hopefully, if everything works, we should see scaling, auto scaling ingress. So are we ready for the demo? Yeah. Let's mirror. We'll give it a second for it to pop up. All right. We're cool here. So here's a few things that we got, which I'll, I'll put actually put in around. So this is all real. Uh, there is a deployment file. I've deployed uh, Stefan's pod info pod. I'm, I'm sure you've seen this. It's running. And everything is running locally. I've, uh, I, I trust the internet, but not during demos. So everything is running locally. So that's the pod that's running. It has a service, of course, as well. So pod and a service, I don't know if it's big enough. But uh, let me, oh, is, that, is that good, yeah. reasonable size? Cool. So we have service and a pod. That's already deployed. And uh, we have an ingress. And in ingress, you can see there's a, there's a bit of a the rule here. Example dot, goes to example. If, if the request is for example.com, send it to the pod info service. So I'm not making any of this up, because if I can do a clear k get pods, you can see in a second there's some, some stuff running. So we have, um, we have our deployment here, the pod info deployment. We have Kada. I've also installed Kada on here. The operator is running. And we got a bunch of CRDs to go with it. And we have uh, pod info. Uh, sorry, uh, we have Nginx ingress running. And we got some of the Prometheus stuff. I know no Kubernetes demo is complete without running kube, kubectl get pods. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. So that's done. Now we, can, we don't have to look at this. Instead of me showing you lines, we have a dashboard here, right? So these are all the pods that are running in the cluster. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in. These are all the pods that are running in the cluster. It's not, uh, it's not a photo. It's an actual like, uh, dashboard. And we have one Nginx uh, pod running. So that's all good. I'm going to put that to the side. Uh, and we're going to step onto here. And Prometheus is also running. We, we've got five minutes, which is good. That's all we need. And uh, let me just quickly zoom out for a sec. If I execute this, this is Nginx Ingress Active Connections. Basically what we're talking about. You can't see this is quite small, but there's only one request because there's only one request that, that was running. And then uh, what I've also deployed is Locust. And Locust is an open source project. Uh, let's just open this. And all it's, it's, got, it's got its own deployment. But in here, you can define a config map. And the config map, we're defining, you have this locust file.py that's written in Python, but you can give it a task. And all this is doing is allowing me to send requests to example.com. That's all it's doing. I want to send requests to example.com. And because it's locust, I can do a bunch of things. I can give the host that I need to send a request to, how many users I want to send per second, and what's the, what's the, so what we can do is we can start swarming the host. We can start sending requests. Let's hit on the chart. Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, let's just do this. Is this, is this that stop? There's some, something's about to go wrong, bound to go wrong, but let's go. There you go, charts. Okay, so let's go hundreds. What was it? 
is going to stick here. And also what we have is, uh, uh, let's just go with that. I think I need this Nginx ingress. And spawn concurrency is 10. So it should uh, start sending requests, right? So it start, started, se started sending requests, and I should see some of the requests go up on here. In a second, we'll have more requests for ingress active connections outstanding. So if I just quickly do a refresh here, sometimes it'll, it'll come up in a second. So basically what we've got is number of users are increasing, and requests are going in, and the response time will keep going up. But what we need is to scale up. So for that, we have to define this called something called a scaled object, which is a CRD. And in here, I'm saying what kind of deployment I want to target, the main Nginx ingress deployment. And I just define how many replicas I need. And we're g gathering metrics from, from Prometheus, because that's, uh, that's where it's scrap scraping it from. This is the one I'm looking for, the metrics name, the, that's the name. And the query is this. All we're saying is if the Nginx ingress connections active is more than 100, so that's the threshold, do you scaling? Do you think? So uh, let's just see if I can execute this. You can see in here, it's, it's a very faint line on, on the edge there, but there's, there's, there's a number of uh, uh, requests that are going in. There's only one, now we're going to focus on this part here. What we'll do is deploy the scaled object, and we should see uh, number of Nginx pods increase. If it does, go wild. If it doesn't, still go wild. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's do this. We're going to do a minus F4. We'll apply the scaled object. And what this will do is, OK, that's created. And what this will do is we'll, you, you'll look at the metrics, and it will start increasing uh, K get deploy. Let's just do that. It, it, it should eventually start increasing the number of pods. Let's just make sure. Ooh. There you go. The pods have started to spin up. And it'll, it'll spin up based on the request that we said, right? So now, yeah, 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 we got it working. We got there. So this is, as you can see now uh, on, on here, the total number of requests are going down because we scaled up based on the request, or based, on the, based on an event. And if I keep this running, uh, once all the traffic served, it'll scale back down. That's where the scaled object is. And you can do this for not only ingress, you can do this for any any workload that you might need. So uh, I'm just going to do one last thing. If you, if you want to, let's just hop back on this. OK. Where's my pointer? Let's go in here. Uh, let's go. So that's what you saw. You saw us gather some metrics. And uh, we just talked about services, ingresses. Then we expose some metrics, and we gather them. We Kubernetes doesn't do this by default. There's a lot of work we have to do to get all of this running, and you saw that. If you want to try, try it out, as I said, uh, it already is a blog for this, bit.ly forward slash KCD scaling. Check out learncase.io. We, we have some awesome blogs on Kubernetes, and uh, we do some training as well, so check that out. Also check out appio.io. If you have any questions or anything like that, I am downstairs all day. Uh, this is our booth in one of the areas. Come and grab me. Let me know if, the, if it was useful or not. Um, if you want to stay in touch with me, my name is Salman Iqbal. You can find me on Twitter at Soulman or also YouTube. But apart from that, thank you so much. Have a great day and a great conference. Thank you, Salman. Uh, that was uh, pretty, pretty intense. Very good. The demo guards have been listening to you. While I was watching Salman, I, I, I started thinking uh, of an experience I had. Uh, and excuse me, excuse me, people that are leaving the room. One thing, there is a workshop going on. Uh, please go outside to the uh, left to the sponsor area. Lunch is going to be in the sponsor area served, and lightning talks in the workshop area. So back to us. What I was, uh, what I was thinking is, um, I always thought I am a very intelligent guy and above average, certainly the average in this room. But <laughs> I, I, I realized it wasn't the case when, to a, when, to a, when I had to marshal uh, YAML into Go. Anybody yeah. knows what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah? Did, you, did you hate your very existence when that happened? <laughs> yeah? 
There are online tools. True, true. There are online tools. So that, that's what I thought. I thought, why shouldn't it be an online tool? So I went the stupid way. That's when I realized that I'm, I'm not above average, I'm quite below. And I wrote my, own, my, my very own tool to Marshall. Two days later, a colleague of mine said, but I use this one online tool. And uh, yeah, you're not very kind. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much, Solomon. No it was very good. Thank you. And what I would like to invite you again, guys, please let the workshop guys go on. Go through the smoking area outside. Grab a smoke if you like or don't. And then you go through the sponsor area. There you can grab your lunch. It's going to be served. We're going to be uh, having the lightning talks in the workshop area. And I'm going to see you here at quarter to 2 at 1.45 with uh, uh, Robin Sipman from ING. Thank you very much. Can you please give us the screen for a moment? We want to test one laptop. <laughs>